Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joshua Aura. Welcome to our today's lesson. So today we shall be looking at topic number one of advanced financial management, which is advanced capital budgeting decisions. Advanced capital budgeting decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I know the fact that capital has never been enough. Capital is always scarce. If, for example, today, you have like 10 million shillings that you've obtained from a bank as a loan, then you happen to be having like three projects. Say you have project A, which needs 5 million, project B, which needs 4 million, project C, which needs 3 million. So you can see that in total, your projects need 12 million. And how much do you have with yourself? Only 10 million. So you can see right away that you are in short of funds. Your capital is not enough. So if capital is not enough, how do you get to know between projects A, B, and C, which one in this case here should we discard? There are various methods you can use. You can use, for example, what you call payback period method, whereby projects in this case here which have got a shorter payback period are the ones that are uh, accepted. We can use what we call net present value method, where in this case here, net present value method, and a net present value method, net present value method, we shall calculate the present values, present values of a, a project's cash flows, and then we subtract the initial outlay. We subtract the initial outlay. Remember that generally, projects which have got a positive net present value should be accepted simply because these are assets which are going to create wealth for the shareholders. So there are various methods. But before I start at, uh, looking at, before I start looking at each one of those models, I would want us to look at how we incorporate risk and uncertainties in our capital budgeting process. So ladies and gentlemen, if you get a question where they have given you cash flows that are probabilistic, how will you be able to handle those probabilities? How will you be able in this case here to manage risk? Ladies and gentlemen, to manage this risk, to make decisions under risky situations, we have to learn three things. Number one, we must learn how to compute expected monetary value. Expected monetary value, that is number one. Number two, you must know how to compute standard deviation. Standard deviation, standard deviation. Number three, you must know how to calculate coefficient, coefficient of variation coefficient of what here variation so if you are given an illustration if you are given an illustration like now this one from this book here aha uh -huh, this illustration here they've given us a project has the following possible outcomes each of which is assigned a probability of occurrence. You can see we have probability there, and then they have given us present value. What is the expected value of the project? Expected value of the project is the same as what here, expected monetary value. So what we do, please let us put down this question all of us. So you can see here, we have probability. We have 0 0.3. 0 0.6 and then we have 0 0.1 and then we have present value present value here is 20 i want to put this in shillings thousands 20 we have 30 we have 50 and then they want us to give them expected value so how do we get expected value remember we don't know the particular economic status that is going to prevail as we are told here the demand could either be low medium or what year high. So we don't know between the three demands which one will prevail. So as such, we are always better off working with, working with an average figure. 
So an expected value is an average figure. If probabilities weren't there, then I would have done the simple average where I would have taken 20 plus 30 plus 50, and then I divide by 3. But here I happen to be having probabilities. So whenever I have probabilities, what I will do is to take the x values that I have, multiplied by their corresponding probabilities, and then I come and do what here? I sum like that. Sum of x values times what here probabilities. So here we have 20 times 0.3 plus 30 times 0.6 plus 50 times 0.1 which will end up giving us what figure so we have 20 times 0.3 plus 30 times 0.6 plus 50 times 0.1 so this one here will end up giving us 29 29 like that so that is what we call an expected value an expected value